G'day guys, Sean from Smart Radical Solutions and welcome to 10 Minute Tech Talks. Today is on the topic of block scenes and uh, there's a very good chance that if you're watching this, you're one of my very valued clients that uh, I've sent you here to watch these block scenes so that you can start to actually create some things within your own brand new system. So the great benefit of a smart home is that once we install all the system in the background, you can then do whatever you need to do with it. To, uh, to automate the functions of your dreams, your desires, and uh, to make your life more practical and easier to live. So let's start with block scenes. So at the very top here, if we go into scenes and click on here, we have three different types of scenes. So there is magic scenes, there are block scenes, and there are lua scenes. So down the bottom here, if we look at uh, scenes on the left, we just click on the plus symbol there and that adds a scene for us. And this is how we start to create. We get the three different choices I just spoke about. My advice is probably don't worry about magic scenes so much. They're probably a little bit more confusing than they are helpful. Um, graphic blocks seem to be really the most easy to use. And Lua scenes, you need to know a programming language called Lua. Um, so it's quite involved. I, I wouldn't even entertain that unless you really, really feel you need to. Um, but certainly block scenes, graphic blocks, there is so much we can do with those. So we click on Add, and this will bring us to the front screen where we start to create our scene. So the important thing to remember with scenes is that we're trying to create an action from a limited input. So we want something to happen automatically. So if we, let's say we push one button, we want 10 things to happen. It might be a weather condition. If it's going to rain, close the blinds, uh, shut the windows. It might be a time of day scene, which says that at 4.30, I want the blinds to close. So today, let's do that. Let's run with um, 4.30, let's go 5 p.m. We want our living room blinds to close. Uh, and we want the living room lights to turn on to 50% and then turn off half an hour later. So let's have a look at how we do this. So the very first thing we need is a trigger. So in this case, our trigger is going to be time of day. So we're looking at 5 p.m. We want to trigger this scene. So we're going to go timers. And we have the various things we can choose here. Weather variables, don't worry about variables, that's for another video. Um, timers, devices, and GPS location. We do GPS via other means, not directly through Fubaro. We find it more reliable through other platforms if need be. Um, not a big fan of it, to be honest, but it is uh, helpful in some circumstance. So let's go timers. Uh, there's various ones in here you can look at on, on what might suit your application best. Today, we're going to look at days of the week, and we're going to tick every day we want this to happen at 5 p.m. So this is our trigger, guys. This is what makes the scene happen. So it's called a condition. Once this condition is met, then it moves on to the next line of that scene. So we meet the condition at five o'clock. What do we want to happen then? We have this drop-down box here. So are we happy with just that condition or do we want to add something else to it? So it might be um, at 5 p.m., um, yeah, if the weather's predicting rain, then do whatever. So we can have, we can add ands in there. We can put always, if it's 5 p.m. or if it's summertime, then we do whatever. So in this case, we're going to keep it really simple. We're going to go on these days of the week at 5 p.m. exact time. I might just note in here, we have some options as well. You can use sunrise, sunset, 45 minutes before, what have you. Um, you can have specific times before and after. There's a few different options in there that you can choose, but today we're going to go exact time, 5 p.m. So, at 5 p.m. on any given day of the week, then we want to pick a device, which we're going to do the living room blind, which is inside. It's in my family living room, and we go living room blind. We have an option here on what we want to do with this blind. Do we want to close it? Do we want to set a value? So that might be 50% closed, for example, or open, glass half full, glass half empty. Uh, so in this case, we're going to go close. We want it closed all the way. We also said we wanted the living room downlights, or the, sorry, the family room downlights uh, to turn on. So we're going to go an and command. We add a command and we go and. We can then choose here on this plus symbol. There we go. On the plus symbol, grab device and we grab our downlights, which are within our family living room. So we go family downlights but we don't want them to turn on to whatever they'll last on because it could be at 5% if we're watching a movie or who knows. So instead, we want it to go to a specific value. So we're going to go set value. Opposite state would mean if it's on, turn it off. If it's off, turn it on. That's opposite state. Um, turn it on, self-explanatory, turn off. But set value is what we're looking at today, and we want to go to 50%. So we're going to put that value in here. Now, these little boxes here are important 
they're a delay. So if we want to delay this function, we can say this happens and then a delay. Let's say we're going to say at five o'clock, we want the living room blind to close and then one minute later, so 60 seconds later, we want the family down lights to turn on. We're going to see at five o'clock, the blind closes and at 5.01, the family down lights turn on to 50%. But then we want them to turn off, let's say um, five minutes later. So we add the same device back in, inside family living and grab our family down lights. But this time we want to turn them off and we're going to set a predetermined time frame in here. So we're going to go, uh, what's that, 300 seconds would be five minutes. And there we have our scene. So on any given day of the week, at 5 p.m., we're going to turn, so we're going to close the living room blind. We're going to turn on the family down lights one minute later to 50%. And then five minutes later, we're going to turn those down lights off. Now, as impractical as that scene sounds, you can obviously manipulate that to however you want your scene to be. Over on the right-hand side here, we simply click on Save. And guys, that is it. That is your scene. Your scene is now written. That's what we call the logic of the scene. So we have a trigger or a condition that we meet, and then we have actions that we roll out beyond that. So up here, we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it um, uh, Afternoon Living. My spelling could do with some work there. Afternoon living. And we're going to assign it into the family living room. Now, we don't necessarily need to see this scene because it's just going to happen in the background. Um, so you don't even need to really assign it if you're not going to see it because it's just an automated scene. Every day it's going to run at that time. So what you can do, you can actually click on Scene Hidden and it disappears. So you don't need to see it in your um, on your iPad or iPhone. Uh, you don't even need to see it in, in here when you're working in here but you do have the option if you wanted to, to go back and expose it to work on it or change it or whatever you need to do. So um, I'll show you how you would expose that down the track if you decided to hide it in the system. When you click back onto your main scenes menu, we have filters on how we see things. So we click on scenes and this will show all of my scenes. And as we go to filter these guys, hang on, where are we? As we go to filter them here, show visible, show hidden, show all. So if you just, whatever you've hidden, you can click on show hidden, it'll just show you the hidden scenes only. Show visible, etc. Um, so that's how you get them back if you do happen to hide it in the system and you can just tick the box to bring it back to the, the front screen. So guys, that is block scenes. That's how they operate. Um, pretty straightforward stuff. Have a play around with them. Something that's really important that if you decide to make a scene and it's not doing what you want it to do, just here, just turn it off. Just simply turn it off like that and that is it. It won't run. It won't do anything unless you physically press the manual play button either here or within the app. Um, so you're not going to affect the house if it's not quite working. If, if you decided to do something and it turns out the whole house is flashing its lights, just turn it off and, and you don't have to worry about it. You can come back to it when you're ready and have more time. Turn it back on, go back into settings and test that scene. So guys, that's scenes for this afternoon. Block scenes, they're a lot of fun. You can do so much with your system now that you've got it in there. So have some fun and give me a, a call during business hours if you want to discuss how you go about something and we'll decide is it a block scene or is it something you need us involved in to write a lure code. So have some fun, guys. Automation can be, uh, can be a great experience and the more you learn about your own system, the better it is for everybody. So hope you got something out of that and uh, have a great day.